How's everybody feeling? <laughs> Excited? Ready to go? Yes. Awesome. We're glad you're here. If you weren't here last week, we started a, a, a series called Divine Direction, and we are learning about staying in God's will and doing God's will for our life. And generally, we think it's this big grand thing out here that it's hard to understand and hard to follow, but what we learned last week is that there are a few things that we can... Um, take from God's more worried about who you're becoming than what you're doing so it's who you're becoming first then what you're going to do next the next thing that we learned last week is God's more worried about why than what our our motives and our intentions matter more than what it is we're doing if you get the who right you're becoming the right person and the why right you're doing it for the right reasons most of the time you're going to do the what, the right what, right? This week we're going to be talking about wisdom to discern. Wisdom to discern. Let me give you all a question. I'll pose a question. If you had a chance to make $12,000 more a year, but you had to pick up and move somewhere, but the city you liked, so would you move for $12,000 more a year? Yes? What if, I, what if I said there's a better offer? There's another offer that if you pick up and move, you can make 50000 more a year. Uh, okay, but how many of you would move that? A city you like, a place that you like, would you move for the 50000 <laughs> But then, wait a minute, what if there was another offer? What if it was $100,000? Would you pick up and move for an extra $100,000 a year? Well, I'm telling you all this because I've had an offer come in. And No, I'm just playing. <laughs> decisions, decisions, decisions. The decisions we make today will determine the stories we tell tomorrow. The decisions we make today will determine the story we, make, we tell tomorrow, the stories of our lives. At the end of your life, you're going to tell the stories to the youngsters. What are those stories going to be? Here's another one. We make our decisions, and our decisions make us. We make our decisions, and our decisions make us. We live in a time that is a big struggle to make decisions decisive and be decisive and make good decisions why because we have more options than we've ever had when i was younger and, and see all of you all, all you teenagers going here goes the i'm old story again <laughs> we had about six channels or seven channels on the tv and three of those would come in clear and the other three you had to keep wiggling these things called antennas you do you don't know what those are and if the knob on the TV broke, you had to get a pair of pliers that you could turn the channels with, right? That's how old I am. Um, so now if you hear our parents talk about it, they can remember when there weren't TVs. Um, but it was easy to decide what you were watching on TV, right? Because you only had a couple of choices, right? Nowadays you turn on the TV and you flip through 100 channels and there's nothing on. Nothing. Why? Because we have become so spoiled, we want to watch exactly what we want to watch, when we want to watch it, right now, we want to be able to pause it, we want to be able to skip through the commercials. Right? I would rather watch something that I'm streaming direct without commercials because I can get it in my time, my place. But then I'm still struggling, well, what do I want to watch now? Because it's the decision. We have so many more options than we ever had. That's why it's harder to make decisions. We also have this thing uh, called the highlight real life, right? And so we see everybody's Facebook and, and uh, uh, what is this fiction thing? What are the, what, Instagram. Instagram and uh, Snapchat. Snapchat. And what we, what we see of other people's lives is the highlight reel. And we see what they want you to see, and you think, wow, those people have such an awesome life. I would love to be like that. 
but it's a highlight reel. You don't see all the behind the scenes stuff. Right? So we've had these, we have these, we struggles to make decisions because we want to make a decision to make us look like everybody else looks because we want to be like them. But can I make that decision? I don't want to fail. I want to be perfect. I don't want to make a bad decision because I want to be perfect like those other people. So many options. We have this illusion of perfection. So it makes us hard to make these decisions um, because we see everybody else's perfect relationships on Facebook and everybody else's perfect meals. You guys, if you have to take a picture of your food and post it right before you eat it, just to show what you're eating, there, there's, there might be an issue, you, right? But we have this illusion of perfection. We have too many options. So, so we, we, we find ourselves struggling to make good decisions because we want to do God's will. We want to do God's perfect will. We want to have those perfect lives. We're afraid to be imperfect. And God will clearly show us exactly what you should do. He'll make every path straight and smooth. There'll never be any problems and resistance or any struggles. Am I right? Exactly. We have this illusion that it's just going to be this easy thing. Let's stop right here before we get into 1 Corinthians. Let's pray. Father, this morning we're so thankful to be in your house. Thankful for a chance to learn from your word and to experience your presence. Father, we pray that right now you clear our hearts, clear our minds. Prepare us for what you're trying to teach us and show us through your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Paul, right? He, had, he, he was like this religious guru of his time, right? He wrote half the Bible, started a bunch of churches. We always talk about Paul. And, but we're going to read in 1 Corinthians 16, 6 through 9, even Paul had some issues on trying to make decisions. Perhaps... I will stay with you for a while or even spend the winter, maybe, so that you can help me on my journey wherever I go. For I do not want to see you now and make only a passing visit. I hope to spend some time with you if the Lord permits. But I will stay in Ephesus until Pentecost because a great door of, for effective work has opened to me. And there you are... And there are many who oppose me. I want you to look at a couple of words here. Perhaps I might stay. I don't, perhaps I will stay with you for a while. Or even spend the winter. He didn't sound too sure, did he? So that I, you can help me on my journey wherever I go. How many of you plan a trip across the country with words like perhaps and maybe and we'll get where we go wherever we go. How many of you ever planned a trip like that? I'm going to get in the car. Oh, we got one at least. I'm just going to hop in the car. We're going to go across the country. We're going to stop somewhere. And I might stay. I might not. This is what Paul's talking about. These decisions. He, but here's the one that, that matters. If the Lord permits. But I will stay in Ephesus until Pentecost because a great door for effective work. You want to see a few things here. The who before the do. The why before the what. If you read this passage with those thoughts in mind I hope but my purpose is to do a great work so I've, I know for sure I'm going to stay here for a while because this is who I am and this is what I'm about the rest of it I'm going to leave up to God right who before do and why before what? We look at that.
But we always come to this point, Lord, tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to do, Lord. I don't know what to do. And what does God say? He will give us wisdom to decide. Wouldn't it be easy if you could just get like the instruction book? Well, maybe, maybe not some of the instruction books, but you know how you get, buy something and it comes with an instruction book and it tells you put this size screw here and you put that together first. Wouldn't it be easy if God would give us just detailed instructions Today, I want you to get up at 8 o'clock. I want you to read your Bible. I want you to go to the... And, and it was detailed, and you could just follow it step by step. He doesn't work that way. He wants to give you wisdom to decide. Speak about Solomon, the great king, right? They say he was the wisest man of his time. He was the richest man. Uh, Solomon was going to... Uh, have a sacrifice to the Lord, and instead of just doing one, he sacrificed a thousand burnt offerings. And Solomon, God asked Solomon, what is it that you want? What is it that you want? Remember who before do and why before what? Solomon could have asked for anything. If I asked you this morning, God comes down on this place and he says, what is it that you want? What would you ask for? A million dollars? House paid off? Health? Prestige? To be popular? To be a movie star? What would the thing that you would ask for? Solomon had this opportunity and what did he ask for? I want wisdom to guide and lead your people. Wisdom. Now think about that answer. God was so impressed with that answer that he gave him all the rest. He gave him the wisdom. He gave him the riches. He gave him everything. Because the who before do and the why before what. Wisdom to leave your people. Uh, Solomon wrote about this. Proverbs 4, 7 says, Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. It's sort of funny to me. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. And whatever else you do, develop good judgment. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do, and whatever else you do, develop good judgment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to practice this here on all you old people. I'm putting myself in that category, so don't take it bad. You know, as a teenager, if you're over 25... If, you have a, if you're 25 or older, you're old, especially if you have a three or a four before you. But if you get on over there past the four, and the, you're really old. How many of you ever said this? If I knew then what I know now. If I only knew then what I know now. Solomon said wisdom is the wisest thing you can get. You know what? Most wisdom is the... We only get it the hard way, right? How many of you ever learned a good lesson from something that was easy? How many of those lessons have you learned from the hardest things you've ever accomplished in your life or had to do or go through? If I only knew. So what do we, what do we get from God? What does God give us? He gives them, us wisdom to decide. He doesn't take all the pressure off of us. You don't get a detailed script but he gives you wisdom to decide. Directional wisdom. What's the first thing you got to do is walk. Walk. Sounds pretty easy, walking, right? Proverbs 13.20 says, Walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. You... Your mama used to tell you, you will become like who you hang out with. You're not going to gain wisdom by hanging out with a bunch of fools. Right? Proverbs says we have to walk with the wise if we want to be wise. This reminds me of a story of two little boys. They were best friends at church, but they both had a reputation for getting into trouble. And one Sunday, one of the boys was homesick, but the other boy, not wanting to let his friend down, 
he decided he was going to be twice as bad as he normally was. Right? So as he was running through the sanctuary after church, the pastor grabbed him and angrily said, Where's God? It's a strange question, but where's God? And the little boy was frightened and didn't know what to say. The pastor continued and he said, I want you to go home and think about it. And I don't want you to come back to church until you can tell me where God is. The little boy went home and called his sick friend on the telephone and said, guess what? They've lost God and they're trying to blame that on us too. <laughs> You're going to become like who you hang out with. Companions of fools suffer harm, it says. Um, from, I'm from the South, and so generally there's a couple of statements that you have to watch out for in, in ga public gatherings. One of them is, hey, y'all watch this. And, and that's usually followed by hold my beer. Or I bet you can't. Bet me. <laughs> you want to? Um, companion of fools suffers harm. If you're trying to serve God, and let's say you're trying to stop doing drugs, um, but you never change the friends that you hang out with, how successful are you going to be? Let's say uh, you're trying to be... A good Christian, read your Bible and pray and all that, but if you don't ever hang out with anybody else that does that, is it going to be very easy, very hard? Let's say you're trying to stop stealing, but you never sell your overcoat. No, I'm just playing. There's just, you will become... Who you hang out with. I was in school, and I don't know if you guys remember, it was like real late 80s, very early 90s, and there was a hairstyle in called the mullet. But I had the, the poof on top and a mullet in the back, right? And back then, the style was the acid wash jeans. Do you remember just, just acid wash jeans? And you would, take, you would take your jeans and you would pour bleach on them. So they would even get worse, and then they would start to rip and get holes. See, we started the whole holy gene thing, right? And then we always had the black t-shirt, and then we had some kind of bandana hanging out of our pockets. We were, we were tough. We were mean. Right? And we did that to try to fit in. And, you know, I wasn't really a bad kid. But I liked being accepted, and I liked being cool, and I liked having friends. So when they would get into trouble and do stuff, hey, I was right in there with them because it was fun. Companion of fools suffers harm. Hey, hold my beer. Watch this. It's almost impossible to live the right life when you have the wrong friends. It's almost impossible to live the right life when you have the wrong friends. Now, am I saying if you're a Christian, you shouldn't hang out with somebody that's not a Christian? I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying you need some positive influence in your life if you want to make a positive influence on others. If all you have is negative influence on your life, chances are the negative is going to take over the positive. Right? If, if I want to be successful in finances. Maybe I need to go get a mentor or a friend or somebody that is successful in their finances that I can learn from and glean from, that they can teach me. Right? If I only hang out with people that are broke, probably not going to learn how to not be broke. Right? If I want to be successful in 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 any other area of my life, if I'm not learning from people who have been successful, it's not going to happen. It's very, almost impossible to be the right person, to live the right life if you're hanging out with the wrong friends. 
if you put yourself in contact with people who have the qualities that you want to have, chances are it's going to rub off on you. If you put yourself in contact with the people that have the qualities that you want to have, chances are it's going to rub off on you. If you surround yourself with people with qualities that you don't like or that you don't want to have, chances are they're going to rub off on you. If you walk with the wild, the broken, and the broke, you're probably going to end up being wild, broken, and broke. If you show me who you're running with, I'll show you who you're becoming. If you show me who you're running with, I'll show you who you're becoming. So, back on this, God's will. God gives us wisdom to decide. We have to decide to walk in wisdom, to make wisdom a priority, to walk with those who are wise. We have to make that decision, wisdom to decide. The next thing we have to do is ask. If any of you who lacks wisdom, you should ask God. James 1, 5, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. You should ask. Okay, this reminds me of another little story here. There was a man walking along a California beach and was deep in prayer, deep in prayer. And when all of a sudden he said aloud, Lord, grant me one wish. The sky clouded, and a booming voice said, Because you have tried to be faithful, I will grant you one wish, the man said. The man said, Build a bridge to Hawaii so I can drive over anytime I want to. It's pretty cool. I'd like to drive to Hawaii. It might be a long trip. The Lord answered, Your request is very materialistic. Think of the logistics and that kind of undertaking and the, the support required and reach the bottom of the, uh, the supports required to reach the bottom of the specific. <laughs> Pacific, I'm sorry. <laughs> the concrete and steel it would take. I can do it, but it's hard for me to justify your desire for worldly things. Take a little more time and think of another wish. A wish you think would honor and glorify me. That's what God said. The man thought for a long time. And finally he said, Lord, I wish that I could understand women. I want to know what they feel like inside. What they're thinking when they give me the silent treatment and why they cry. What they mean when they say nothing. And, and how I can make a woman truly happy. After a few minutes, God said, how many lanes do you want on that bridge? <laughs> so, God said, ask, and it will be given. If you ask for wisdom, it will be given to you. Um, the show that came out a long time ago was, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Have you ever watched that show? And failed miserably. Not very smart, smart as a fifth grader. You know, when, when your kids are young, you're their hero. Right? And then when they get a little older, pff, they don't know anything. They're dumb. Then after they get a little bit older, a little further down the road, then they, they realize that maybe you had some wisdom. Um, and then they turn into you. And that's the funny part for the... That's the blessing of the grandparents. Is when, if you've ever done this, if you've ever done this, if you've ever had that time when you were saying something to your child and, you, and then you realize, wait a minute, I sound just like my mom or just like my dad. I can't believe I'm even saying that. I swore I would never say that. I had a moment like that when a, uh, um, when Tina was first born and she was just a toddler and I was putting her to bed and, the, and I'm reading her a book and, and for some reason it just hit me how much responsibility it was going to be raising a child. You know, I was still young and dumb and wild and, and then for some reason it clicked, oh, you're a dad now. 
and, and I go leave the room after she's falling asleep, and I call my mom, and I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Everything I ever did. It will happen. Teenagers, you think we're dumb now? Just wait. Just wait. Um, to get wisdom with God, you have to spend time with God. Wisdom's the most important thing. If you want godly wisdom, you have to spend time with God. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway of your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Psalm 32, 8. Guide, advise, watch over. It's not this direction thing. It's this, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to guide you. I want you to become the right person. I want you doing it for the right reasons. Right? I want you seeking my wisdom, and I want you to ask me when you need something. Uh, you ever see somebody ch train a child to ride a bike? A good parent. You know, they get them started, and they're, they're holding, and they eventually let them go, but they're still right there alongside with them. If they fall, they catch them. That's the picture of God. That's the picture of godly wisdom. Psalms 32.8, the Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you. I will watch over you. So first we have to walk with the wise. If we want to be wise, we have to ask God. We're lacking wisdom. To get God's wisdom, we have to spend time with him. The more time we spend with him, the more of his wisdom he can impart to you. And then decide. You get to decide. If you're becoming the who before the do, if you're putting the why before the what, if you're walking with the wise and you're asking God for wisdom, he's going to give you wisdom to decide. You still get to make the decision. Freedom to decide. You make the choice. You make the call. A lot of people like to, well, how do I know it's God leading me? How do I know it's this and that? It's got the devil. It's whatever it is. God gives you wisdom to choose. He gives you wisdom to choose. You love him. You trust him. You decide. Paul, trying to decide, he never heard, it, you know, a lot of times you never hear this. We try to make it the spiritual. Well, the, the, the Lord spoke and told me that I'm going to do this. And sometimes you get that. Sometimes you get that feeling. Maybe it's not an audible voice, but sometimes you get, I know God's impressing me to do this. And sometimes you don't. Paul never said, and the Lord spoke a thunder to me, and my servant you shall do. He always spoke in King James. You know that, right? No, 1 Thessalonians, Paul made the decision. So when we couldn't stand it no longer, we thought it best. We thought it best to be left by ourselves in Athens. He made the decision. Well, what if we make the wrong decision? What if you make a mistake in deciding? Isn't that scary? Guess what you get if you make a mistake when you're deciding? What do you get? You get wisdom. Right? If you make the mistake, you've decided the wrong thing, you'll get wisdom. It may come in the, the form of another bill you can't afford or another this or that, but you will get wisdom for the next time, you time it's time for you to make a decision. But making the mistake that should not Keep us from making the decision. And here's one thought. And this is a hard one. When you think about how big and grand and God is, sometimes the decisions and the mistakes we make now prepare us for something later. Right? Um... How effective of a minister could I be 
if I had never experienced life before God? How compassionate could I really be to someone who's struggling if I had never struggled? How loving could I really be if I had never been in a place where I didn't feel loved? The decision we make, even if it's a mistake, becomes wisdom. The, 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 the best part about it all is God is with me. Even if I don't get it right, He promises to be there with me, to guide me, to direct me. Funny story, and, and I'm put Angelo on the spot, but it's a funny story. It's because it fits. He's, he's learning to drive. He's about to go get his permit. So what do we do? We take the car, the brand new car. Okay, the year old car. <laughs> The one, that, the one that we're still making payments on, we go to a neighborhood, we're going to drive around a little bit. I'm, I'm there. I'm here to guide you. I'm here to direct you. He's doing a great job. He's doing a great job learning to drive. We get to a dead end. That, what are we going to do? Oh, let's do a three-point road turn. There's nothing around, you know. What could happen? Well, he's not used to the car, so it's not his fault totally, but... Karis car, when you put it in reverse, it goes. And uh, we hit a little sign. That's it. That's all. Yes. All right. Now, mostly, mostly it's my fault because as, as his teacher, I wasn't paying enough attention to the backup camera that's on the dash. How do you hit a sign when you've got a backup camera? <laughs> right? Mostly it's my fault. We both hit the brake at the same time. I just put a little scratch. But guess what we got from the mistake? We both got wisdom. We both got wisdom. I promise you, he'll never uh, do a three-point road turn like that again, even if it was advised by me. He knows I can't always trust my teacher because I'm human. Right? I should have been watching a little better. But both of us learned a lesson. If you make a mistake, you get wisdom. How do I learn how to be a good driver? By being a very bad driver. <laughs> My first two vehicles I had, both of them had smashed front ends. The one thing my dad always said to me, you're tailgating people. Why are you following too close? After smashing the second one, I learned not to tailgate people. <laughs> Guess what else I learned by making mistakes while I was a young driver? I learned my dad's not going to pay for my mistakes. <laughs> I learned that I better have a good insurance, and I better save some money when I got to go buy a new front end for a vehicle. But wisdom comes through failure sometimes. But... Even if we make a mistake, we still gain wisdom, which is the most important part. The main thing about God's divine direction is, Psalm 32, 8 says, The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathways for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. If you want to be in God's will, if you want to follow His direction, you have to be who before do. Who are you becoming? Who are you becoming? Take a look at the people that you hang out with the most. Do you really want to be like them? Is that your goal? Who before do? Why before what? What are the motives? What are the motives? We learned that we're supposed to glorify God with everything that we do. The why matters so much more. You could accomplish so many things, but if you did it for the wrong reason, does it count? Walk, ask, and God will give you wisdom to decide. Let's pray. Father, we're so grateful that as a loving Father, you promise that you will guide us along the best pathways for our lives. 
and that you will advise us and that you will watch over us. Lord, this morning we really truly have a desire to be like you, to, to follow your every move. And we really desire to have your will done in our lives. And Lord, we pray that you would help us to understand, that you would help us to become the people that you want us to be, that you would help us to, to test our intentions, to search our heart and see what truly motivates us. Lord, that we would learn to walk with people in wisdom, that we would want to associate ourselves with the people that we want to be like and that you want us to be like. Lord, that, that we would learn to ask. We're asking you now. We desire your direction. We desire your will in our lives. And we're asking that you would give us the wisdom. And Lord, we ask that you would make us not fearful of the decisions. And that when we get them right, that we would give you all the glory. And that when we get them wrong, that you could teach us the wisdom for the next time we come to that point. That we could make the right decisions. Above our Lord, we want to glorify you with our lives. Let that be what motivates us. That you would get the glory. And that we could just be your servants. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.